around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. boxes of 45. All right. And, uh, I'm a little short of rifle ammunition, too, Mr. Witherspoon. Well, let's see. You still use that 44 Henry, don't you, Marshal? Yeah, that's right. And how many? Oh, a couple of boxes will do. Ah, right, here we are. Thank you. All right, Chester. What about you? Any fresh tobacco come in, Mr. Witherspoon? Yes, sir. There. One caddy or spit of drowned tobacco. That's all. Uh, say, uh, could I owe you for this, Mr. Witherspoon? I've had just about the one unluckiest month I ever knew. You fellows will never learn, will you? How to charge you interest, that's what. Well, I, I won't take it if you'd rather it didn't. <laughs> Don't be a fool. Of course you'll take it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Witherspoon. But you stay away from those gambling halls. You can lose more money than your money there, you know. Uh, you heard about the killing at the Texas Trail last night then, huh? I did. Where were you, Marshal? Well, I've been away, Mr. Witherspoon. I just got back this morning. Mm. Nobody told me. Then I take it the man who did the shooting has got clean away. Oh, it wasn't a murder, Mr. Witherspoon. I looked into it. He acted purely in self-defense. Ah. That's what all the witnesses said, Mr. Witherspoon. Just another case of men being ruined by good whiskey and bad women, that's all. Well, there was a girl mixed up in it, all right. Huh? Who, Chester? A new girl, Mr. Dillon. Calls herself Dolly Varden. She's caused nothing but trouble ever since she got here. But what do you mean? I don't exactly know, sir. Something to do with the gambling, though. Oh. And then she'll cause more trouble. Uh... Chester, I think I'll drop by there. All right, sir. Uh, take my cartridges to the office, will you? Yes, sir. Be glad to, Mr. Dill. Uh, you had an unlucky month, too, Marshal? What? You ain't paid me. <laughs> I'm sorry. There you are. <laughs> oh, thank you, Marshal. Good day. And good day, Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Witherspoon? <laughs> Hello, John. Oh, hello, Marshal. Ah, oh, hello, Matt. Kitty. Did you have a good trip? Ah, oh, successful anyway. Never sit on. Yeah. Well, I guess you heard about the killing last night, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Kitty. Huh? Who is this Dolly Varden? Oh, I don't know, Matt. She says she's from St. Louis, but she is the luckiest thing I ever saw. Oh? Mm hmm. Does she gamble? No. No, she says that'd spoil it. She's just lucky for other people. How? Whoever she's with, he wins. It's real simple. Oh. And they cut her in to stand by them, is that it? Yeah. You never saw anything like it, Matt. She goes from man to man, whoever pays her the most. But they figure it's worth it, huh? Yeah, they sure do. Unless she's with a man, he, he just doesn't seem to win. So, naturally, in time, they offer her practically anything to stay with him. Yeah. Oh, she's made a lot of money here. Which game, Kitty? 
Farrell. Only Farrell. Mm -hmm. She says it wouldn't work with anything else. Does anyone walk out ahead of the game? No. No, not from what I've heard. Everybody's losing sooner or later. If they can't afford Dolly, they go on trying anyway. And the fight starts over one man offering her more money than another, is that it? Well, that's what happened last night, Matt. Who's running the Pharaoh game? Oh, that's Frank Paris. Oh, oh yeah. I, I don't remember him. Well, he came here a few days after Dolly did. That sounds like an old setup. Well, nobody's caught him cheating yet, Matt. And if he and Dolly know each other, they're pretty smart about it. I've never seen them together once. Mm-hmm. Uh, where is Dolly now, Kitty? Upstairs. You want to meet her? Yeah. I'll, I'll go get her. Thank you, Kitty. She was on her way down, Matt. Uh, Dolly, this is Marshal Dillon. Hello, Dolly. How do you do, Marshal? Well, sit down. Thank you. Well, I, I'll uh, see you later, Matt. Yeah, sure, kid. Tell me, Dolly, did you come here with Frank Ferris? Why, no. I got here before he did. Uh, sure, but that's not what I meant. What did you mean, Marshal? I hear you got a lot of money for making a man lucky. Is that against the law? Only when it leads to trouble and killing. I'm not responsible for what these men do. No, but I am. Then why don't you do something about it, Marshal? That's why I'm talking to you. Go ahead, then. Talk. Have you been this far west before, Dolly? No. Well, you see, men out here settle their differences a little faster than they do back east. Most of them don't spend much time in towns. But when they do come in, if there's anything or anybody that smells like trouble, well, it seems like they always find it. What's all that got to do with me? You're trouble, Dolly. Man got killed last night because of you. I don't think I like you, Marshal. <laughs> You'll like me less when I run you out of town. <laughs> oh, you couldn't. I'll leave Frank Paris up to the men. If he's caught cheating, they'll shoot him. But I don't want any more killing because of you. You understand? No, I don't understand. Why should you think it's that It's I... simple, Dolly. I don't believe in luck, that's all. If I did, I'd have been killed a long time ago. Say, Mr. Dillon? Yeah? Now, I forgot to tell you. While you were over at the Texas Trail this afternoon, Doc was in looking for you. That was four or five hours ago, Chester. I guess it wasn't very important. No, sir, but I should have told you. Oh, uh, Matt. Uh, hello, hello, Doc. Uh, I, I told him you were looking for him, Doc. Well, thank you, Chester. Thank What'd you. you want, Doc? Well, Matt, I've been thinking I got an idea. Yeah? That fellow that got shot last night, they buried him in his saddle blanket today. So? Well, that's no way for a man to be buried. Dodge ought to be ashamed of itself. This is a big town now. Well, how would you propose burying them, Doc? Why, in pine boxes, Matt. Any man deserves at least a pine box. Well, I agree. Well, that's my idea, Matt. I think we ought to form a sort of a committee and raise enough money to bury people properly here. Why, it's a disgrace this way. Well, now, Doc, I, I don't know. If we did that, everybody would want to come to Dodge to get shot. We got enough trouble as it is. Oh, no, I'm serious, man. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll contribute a dollar. Oh, now what's that? It sounds like somebody couldn't wait for one of Doc's pine boxes. Come on, Chester. Yes. Yes. You might as well come too, Doc. Uh, sure, Matt. Oh, I'm coming. Stop all this, Matt. I am, Kitty. Where is he? Dead on the floor over there. Oh, well, I'd better take a look at him. I meant, where's the man who killed him? 
Oh, Jack Singer there. But it was self-defense, Matt. Anyone can tell you. Jack Singer? Yeah. He's not a killer. I know. Was it Dolly again? Yeah, same thing. Where is she? Oh, I see her. Excuse me, Kitty. Dolly? Don't bother me, Marshal. I didn't shoot him. I warned you once, Dolly. They're grown men. I'm not responsible for them. There's a stage leaving Dodge at noon tomorrow. Be on it. What? I'm sure you've got enough money for a ticket. And don't come back to Dodge. Ever. (laughs) Sure, Marshal. Sure. Well, sir, it lacks 15 minutes until noon, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. And it lacks Dolly Varden, too, Chester. Oh, she'll be along. Women don't never get any place ahead of time. Only two passengers have showed up so far. Maybe you should have run Paris out of town, too. Well, I don't like to do that. Just on suspicion. But I will as soon as somebody catches him cheating. If he lives through it. Mr. Dillon, maybe you try too hard to make the law look fair. Yeah, maybe. Now, anyway, here she comes. Mm-mm. She's not carrying any bags. No, she isn't. Coming this way. Yeah. Stay, Marshal. Goodbye, Dolly. Well, I didn't say goodbye. I said good day. What? I've thought it over, Marshal. I've decided not to leave after all. There's the stage, Dolly. Get on it. No. Get on it, Dolly. I said no. All right, if you... I'll have to... You'll uh... what, Marshal? Now, get on the stage. Oh, it's no use yelling at me, Marshal. That's not going to do it. Oh? What is? Well, you'll just have to... uh, Throw me on it. Throw you on it? Yes. Your friend here might help. Chester, isn't it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Chester Proudfoot. I- I'm glad to know you, Miss Dolly. I mean... Oh, shut I mean, up, not... Chester. Yes, sir. Well, Chester could take my arms. You could take my feet, Marshal. Of course, it might be a little awkward getting me into the coach, but I'm sure you could manage it somehow. Oh, my, no, Miss Dolly. We can't handle a woman that way. Oh, goodness, no. No? Oh, no. Oh, Then you'll have to do it by yourself, Marshal. Throw me over your shoulder. Or maybe drag me. You're wasting time, Dolly. It won't be easy, though. Because, Marshal, I'll scream and I'll cry and scratch and bite and I'll kick. Oh, how I'll kick. I'll be a mess when you get me there and I'll have the whole town out watching you be a hero. You're serious, aren't you? Of course you could hit me. You could knock me out with your fist or your gun. I wouldn't scream so much then. Gosh, Mr. Dillon. Well, Marshal. I'm tempted to put you on that stage no matter how, Dolly. But maybe there's another way to handle you. The best way to handle me is to leave me alone. And have more men get killed? If they're fools enough, what difference does it make? I don't think I could explain that to you, Dolly. But anyway, you remember what I said. You're through and dodge. Come on, Chester. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Dillon, how are you going to get rid of her? I'm going to start by ruining her game, Chester. But how? I'll show you. Right here at the Dodge House. Here? Yeah. Frank Paris stays here. Go find out what room he's in, will you? Yes, sir. You know Paris lives here. Kitty? Oh. Now, here it is. Who is it? Oh. You're Marshal? 
Marshal Dillon, aren't you? Yeah. I want to talk to you, Ferris. Sure. Come in, Marshal. You too, uh, uh, Chester. That's right. Well, what can I do for you, Marshal? Ferris, I told Dolly Varden to leave town on the noon stage today. Oh? She refused. I'd have had to force her physically to make her leave. Well, why are you telling me this, Marshal? Because I thought I'd leave you alone, Ferris, and let whoever caught you take care of you. But I've changed my mind. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. Don't you? No. No, I don't. Then just remember this. If Dolly Varden comes anywhere near your table from now on, you stop the play till she leaves. Is that clear? Now, look here, Marshal. I've got nothing to do with that woman. If you can't handle her, you've got no right wrecking my game trying to. Why? I wouldn't have a player left if I started that. Harris, maybe I can't rough up a woman and run her out of town, but you're a man, and I won't even waste time arguing. You'll do as I say, or you'll leave. There's too much money in Dodge for me to leave, Marshal. It's the way I said, Ferris. I won't even argue with you. Good day. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... America's finest men choose United States Army careers. These young Americans know that in the new regular United States Army, there is travel, education, good pay, good food, and all, yes, all the essentials of a full good life and fine future. These young Americans know that the finest technical schools in the world, the United States Army's technical schools, will provide them with increased skill and earning capacity, that they will earn while they learn and open opportunities for steady advancement in Army careers. There are thousands of these young people who have been picked by the Army who are proud of their country's uniform, and their country is proud of them. The recruiting officer at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station has the complete details. Remember, America's finest men choose U.S. Army careers. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Quite a meal tonight. <laughs> Quite a meal. Yeah. Sure was, Doc. I was nearly starved, too. Yeah, haven't had a meal like that since we got snowed in at Fort Fletcher a few years back. What do you mean, Doc? Well, one night, four of us were down to a quart of dried peas and a bottle of vinegar. <laughs> but by heaven, it made a better meal than Delmonico's puts out. <laughs> oh, Doc, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Doc likes southern cooking, Chester. And any man who works hard deserves good food. <laughs> I'll let Chester answer that, Doc. Uh, when you're through, Chester, I'll see you at the office. All right, I'll be along directly. So long, Doc. Bye, Mac. Marshal? Hello, Dolly. Mind if I walk along with you for a minute? All right. What's on your mind? Marshal, I'm sorry I behaved the way I did this noon. What? I shouldn't have done that. It's just that I was so desperate, that's all. Desperate? About what? I've got to tell you. And I want to. But I can't out here in the street. Somebody will come by and then I'll be embarrassed. Here, let's just get around the corner out of the light. Please. Please, Marshal. Go ahead. Now, what's this all about, darling? I was sort of hysterical this noon. 
You've got to forgive me. You've just got to. Now, don't <laughs> cry. Just tell me. I've been thinking about it ever since last night. I can't leave Dodd, Marshal. I don't have any place to go. Now, Dolly. Oh, don't make me go. Please. I promise I won't go near a gambling table again. I swear I won't. Well, it's up to you, Dolly. If, if you do that and don't cause any oh, trouble, right? Thank you, Marshal. Thank you. I, I promise. You'll see. Yeah, sure, I'll see. Please go now. I want to dry my eyes before I get out in the street again. Now stay away from Frank Paris, darling. Let's pull your gun. All right, drop it. You mean you're going to shoot a woman, Marshal? I doubt it. Drop it. I will not. <laughs> Give it you... to me. There. Well, you're quite a girl, Dolly. I'll kill you yet. You're going to jail. Huh? You're too dangerous to be loose woman or no woman. Oh. Put me down! Uh, you won't! Put me down! Do you hear me? Where's Frank Paris, Kitty? He moved his table. It's beyond the bar. There. Oh. Then that's him with his back to us, huh? Yeah. What's the trouble, Matt? You're mad about something. I just threw Dolly in jail. Now it's Paris's turn. You stay out of this, Kitty. Hey, come on. That's your... What's going on here? What's all this... Oh... Oh, it's the marshal. You're all through, Paris. And don't try anything. What's the trouble now, marshal? There's no woman near my table. And there won't be, not for a long time. Dolly Varden's in jail. What? She tried to shoot me a little while ago, and I threw her in jail. Oh, I see. Well, maybe she's better off there. She did cause a certain amount of trouble around here. She can't see it that way, Paris. She thinks it's all right to lock up a man, but not a woman. What's all this got to do with me, Marshal? You're going to jail, too. You can't arrest me. I'm not arresting you. There's no proof of anything against you. I got Dolly now on attempted murder, but nobody's caught you doing a thing. Come on, Paris, let's go. No. No, you just said it. You can't arrest you're me. You're going to jail, Paris. And tomorrow you're leaving Dodge. You're clever, but you're crooked. And Dolly's in it with you. That's all I need to know, proof or no proof. I should have stopped you the day I got back. I told you, Marshal, that there's too much money here. I don't want to leave. I'm not arguing with you. I just wanted everybody here to know about this. We were doing fine till you came back, Marshal. You're in the way now. Don't be a fool, Paris. I'll chance it. Oh! Ow! My hand. You got my hand. My hand. You're lucky I didn't kill you. Now you walk out that door. Doc will take care of you in jail. tickets, Mr. Dillon, all the way to St. Louis. Thanks, Chester. And here's your change, Mr. Paris. Give it to Dolly. Here, Miss Dolly. Thanks. You think I'd better count it, Chester? Oh, no, ma'am. I counted it. It's all there. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. I trust you. I'm not suspicious of everybody like the marshal here. Well, who wouldn't be suspicious? You both tried to kill him. Sure. But he trusts me now. Don't you, Marshal? I do. Well, you think I'm going to get on that train without making you throw me on it, don't you? No, I'm not sure. 
But I'll throw you on it if I have to. Yes, I know. You would now. I would. Why don't you shut up, Dolly? The marshal could still bring us to trial if he wanted to. I know. Tell me, Marshal, why didn't you? The judge is busy enough without my hauling in everybody who tries to shoot me. And besides, you've sort of had your wings clipped. How? Oh, Dolly, what's the use of lying to him anymore? He's talking about me. I may never be able to deal cards the way I used to with his hand. Right. It's the truth. But think about it, Dolly. There are quite a few people who manage to get along on an honest living. <laughs> I never knew how, but we're going to have to find out. <laughs> Well, there it is. Bye, Marshal. Chester. Bye. Yeah, bye. Marshal, I don't think I hate you as much as I did. Good. Dolly! Coming! So long, Dolly. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg as Dolly, with John Daner as Paris, and James Griffith as Witherspoon. Parley Bear as Chester, Georgia Ellis as Kitty, and Howard McNair as Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Services to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Lovely Dorothy McGuire, star of Broadway and Hollywood, will be heard on CBS Radio next Monday evening in a dramatic story entitled The Fall of Maggie Phillips. It's another in your Lux summer theater series, so be listening for it next Monday on most of these same stations. The Fall of Maggie Phillips, starring Dorothy McGuire. This is George Wall speaking. Sunday nights, Dick Powell is rough, tough Richard Diamond, private detective on the CBS Radio Network.